Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're talking about the remnant. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And going to touch a little bit on what we had last week. And, and we're going to move on to some more. As I was studying yesterday afternoon and Friday afternoon, and how many people ever heard the phrase, it's usually after we've got up from a buffet or something, Brother Scott. We say, I feel like I'm about to bust a gut. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the way I felt as I was studying Friday afternoon, yesterday afternoon. Yeah. In the spirit, I felt like I was about to bust a gut. Hallelujah. My, my, my. He just keeps giving it and giving it and giving it. Yeah, and you know what I do? I just keep taking it and taking it and taking it. Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. My, my, my. I just keep soaking it in. Double force. Hallelujah. And I hope to be able to give that, some of you that this yeah. morning. 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, we talked last week about how Elijah and the prophets of Baal Come on. had a showdown on Mount Carmel. Amen? Yeah. And we talked about how that God supplied the fire and Baal didn't. Amen? Yeah. You home out there? Yeah. God's still supplying the fire and Baal still ain't. Amen? All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Still ain't but one fire supplier this morning. Amen. And that's God. Amen? And I ain't talking about Allah. I'm talking about the everlasting Father. Amen? Who came to this world in the flesh in a man by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? The anointed one. I'm talking about Jesus that, hallelujah, has, His name has been exalted above every name. Yeah. My, 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 still supplies the fire today. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a lot of tricks going on. Yeah. A lot of people pulling rabbits out of the hat. Amen. And I know you've heard me say that a lot lately, but that's the way some of these preachers remind me of. Amen. Yeah. Snake oil salesmen. Yeah. Tricksters. Amen. Yeah. Somebody that just, you know, has got a sleight of hand to try and deceive people. People are easily deceived. Amen? True. And it seems like the closer we get to the end, yeah. the stronger the... Don't just seem like it. It is. The closer we get to the end, the stronger the spirit of deception is. Right. Amen? True. And I tell you what, I've seen people deceived and fall away that you couldn't have paid me money to believe they would have ever been deceived. Amen? True. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But it's happened. True. It has happened. Amen? Right. They've fallen away. The Bible says that there's going to be a great right. falling away. Amen? Falling away from what? The truth. True. Amen? Yeah. Falling away from the truth of God. The Word of God. The principles of God. Oh. The way of God. Amen? Oh, and we have seen that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Reed. Oh. And that's the kind of situation was going on there when Elijah and the prophets of Baal had their showdown. Right. Amen? Of course, then, you know, you could see it all the way through the Old Testament. How that they would they would worship false gods and they would backslide and they would get away from the real only one and true God, Amen. The I am that I am, and they would begin worshiping false idols and things that had no power. And I told you before, I tell you again, I believe man would worship a cough drop if you gave him a long enough time to think about it, Amen. Hell, just like Dagon. Yeah. How they worshipped him and he fell over and they had to go in and set him back up. And instead of them thinking, well, he ain't got no power, can't even get himself up off the floor. What they do, they went back in and started worshiping him all over again. Amen. Right. Some of his stuff falls off while they do, they fix him up, right. set him up, start worshiping him all over again. Amen. Right. So man has a has a tendency to be deceived. Right. And more times than not, it's by things that really, if you stood off and looked at it through the eye of truth and through the eye of the spirit, ridiculous things. Right. Amen? Amen. Ridiculous things. That's what's going on here whenever Elijah has the showdown with the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. We talked about this last week. We talked about how that God sent the fire and the people begin to say, the Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And the prophet Elijah, He slew the prophets of Baal. Amen? Right. He was the prophet of God of that day. Come on. So He slays all of Jezebel's prophets and the old witch gets upset because hubby comes home with some news she don't like. Right. She said, what's going on over there? What happened on Mount Carmel? Come on. Ahab says, Jesse, <laughs> all you prophets are dead. Yeah. Amen? Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Can you imagine when the devil sends forth his little entourage, as Brother Sleece calls them, huh. to come and defeat you? 
And they have to drag themselves back in humility of defeat back to the cave where the devil's hiding them in. And he says, how are things going? He says, well, boss, I got bad news. Yeah. And oh, holy roller beat us. Oh, hallelujah. And oh, holy roller beat us again. Right. My goodness. Amen. So Jezebel says, you tell him I'm going to kill him. I'm going to cut his head off. Come on. Well, they run, they tell Elijah, Elijah, you're fixing to be dead. Yeah. Elijah gets discouraged and he runs and he hides in a cave and God meets him there. Oh. See, you can't run from God. Amen. One of these days you'll be able to ask Jonah about his travels. Amen. Right. When you're sitting on the other side of the river, maybe under one of the shade trees there. Come on. Say, Jonah, tell me about your life. And he'll tell you how that he tried to run from God. Come on. Amen. Amen. He'll tell you how he got on the ship going to Tarshish. Right. Trying to go farther away from the call of God. Amen. Amen. And he'll tell you how that whenever he got on the ship, God was there. Right. When he was in the storm with the sailors, God was there. Right. When he got swallowed by the whale and he went down into the depths of the belly of the whale, the Bible describes it as a hell type situation. Right. God was there. Amen. Amen. He had run from him. Got up, ran down, got on the ship, headed to Tarsus, paid the fare thereof. Yeah. Finds himself in the belly of the whale and surely, surely now he's got away from God. And you know what happens? That still small voice that Elijah hears here in the cave on the mountain. Right. Jonah hears it Amen. in the belly of the whale. Praise Amen. God. So you can't get away from God. Matter of fact, I believe it was David said, If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. That's right. You're there. You got it. Can't get away from God. Amen. It's like running on a treadmill. Right. Amen. By the way, I got one if anybody wants it. It works about half time. Running on a treadmill. Use up all your energy and you run and you run and you still ain't went nowhere. Yeah. God's still right there. That's it. So God speaks to Elijah Thank in a still small voice. God. And what's the question that he asked him, church? He said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Mm. Amen. Come on. What are you doing here? And Elijah's answer was, I'm the only one left that's yeah. serving you. I'm the only one left that hasn't bowed the knee. Right. So God moves and there's a fire, there's an earthquake, and the Bible says that the Lord is not in that. And He still small voice comes to him and Elijah wraps his face in his mantle and he goes out and he stands on the edge of the cliff and the still small voice whispers to him and says, What doest thou here, Elijah? And Elijah says to him, says, I alone am, am the one that's serving you. I'm the only one. And I'm paraphrasing here. It's right there in the 19th chapter of the book of what did I say? First Kings. Amen. I'm the only one that has not bowed the knee to Baal. What did he say to him exactly? I'll tell you. I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And we find that God's answer to him was this in verse 18. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed Him. And then we learn from Paul in the book of Romans, the 11th chapter, Paul talks about this situation and he tells them that God has not forsaken His people, that God has not turned His back on them. He reminds them of the situation with Elijah up in the cave. Amen. Amen. And he says, do you not know the answer that God gave to him? In verse 4, Romans 11, chapter, God says, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image Baal. Then Paul tells us this. He was talking to them, but this message goes for us today. The Word of God is eternal. Amen. God does not yeah. change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Paul speaks to the Romans and says, Even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Amen. Paul in speaking about the people that God told Elijah about, that the 7,000 that had not bowed their knee to Baal and had not kissed him. Paul talks in the, in the present day in the Roman, the books of 
book of Romans there where he's writing to the Roman people. He's talking at that time. He says, even today, this present time, God has a remnant of people. Amen. According to, listen, you ain't going to get into this remnant no other way than through the election of grace. Amen. By grace are you saved through faith. Amen. It is by faith. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. There ain't but one way to get into the remnant this morning. You ain't born into it. It don't matter what kind of blood you got flowing through your veins. It don't matter if you're circumcised or you're uncircumcised. There ain't but one way to get into the remnant. There ain't but one door. Just as when Noah built the ark, there wasn't but one way to get on the boat. There was a door, and that door today's name is Jesus, and you can't get on there any other way. You can't get into this remnant that we're talking about any other way. He said, I am the door. And then you can't get up. No, he said, if you come up any other way, you're a thief and a robber. Amen. Ain't but one way to get there. And that's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is the door. Yes. He is the door. And I told you last week that in this present day, yeah. when it seems like there ain't nobody left living for God. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen such a mess in your life? No, sir. Amen. Amen. That's it. You got it. Worse shape today than ever before. Yes. The world and the church. Amen. That's and it. there are times that you feel like maybe there ain't very many people Come on. serving the Lord. Right. Always oh, a lot of religious people. Yeah. There's a whole lot of hypocrites. Yes. Amen. Come on. But how much of the remnants left? Yeah. How many times have we got discouraged and thought we were all there were? Amen. Amen. My, my, my. God's got the same message for us today in the year 2012 that He had for Elijah back there in the cave that He had for the Romans there in the book of Romans 11th chapter when Paul spoke to him. Yeah. Even in this present time, God has a remnant. Yeah. He has a people that have not bowed their knee to Baal. Right. That have not kissed his image. Amen. Amen. He's going to have a people in these last days. Right. Amen. That come up out of a people. Amen? And they're not going to be carrying some. Listen, I know we've got every day it seems like you got somebody popping up with a new message. Yeah. A new revelation. Right. And I love revelation. Amen? Amen. A new way of thinking. A new way of doing things. We've had crazy stuff come down through the pike that people have grasped onto and still swallowing the lies like the Word of Faith movement, the power of positive thinking. Amen? Yeah. That's just to name a couple. There's a whole lot of movements out there. All of them come up with this new message. Well, this people here that's going to rise up out of a people, this remnant that's going to come up out of a dead and hypocritical church, this remnant people that's going to walk in faith in these last days, they're going to be carrying a message. But it ain't a new message, honey. It's an old message. Amen? It's the oh, it's a oh, it's, it's, it's it's, it's the world's oldest and truest story. Amen. All the way the book, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation to the end of time. This is the message. Jesus Christ and Him crucified and His blood that saves all souls that will come to Him. Amen. Are we going to be packing a message alright? Yeah. The remnant's got a message. Amen. Right. But it ain't a new message. Come on. It's an old message. It's one that is timeless. It's one that is everlasting. It's one that never grows old. Amen. When I say old, I'm talking about time-wise. Amen. I'm talking about something that has stood the test of time. Amen. I'm telling you, it ain't no new thing. It's the same thing that God's been using all the way through the Old Testament, all the way through the New Testament. Every bit of it points to one man, one one Savior, one mediator, and His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, God in the flesh, Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father, Almighty God, the I Am that I Am that spoke to Moses out of the Mosada, out of the burning bush, and said, you go tell Pharaoh who sent me. Right. You go tell Pharaoh who sent you. Come on. Say to Moses, he said, who am I going to tell them? Come on, brother. They're going to want to know. Come on, preach. You tell them I am that I am. Amen. Who's this redneck going to be following today? The I am right. that I am. The God of <laughs> the God of Jacob. Yeah. The God of Isaac. Come the on. God of Abraham. Yeah. My goodness. God's going to have a people. Yes, sir. That ain't the question. The question is, are you going to be one of them? Amen. Amen. 
He's always had a remnant. That's right. Amen. That's right. He's always had a people. Amen. We learned last week, and this is what we left off with, Isaiah, the first chapter of the ninth verse. Yeah. Said, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Yeah. We should have been as Sodom. And we should have been like into Gomorrah. We would have fell off into a place of no return yeah. had it not been for a very small remnant. Amen. We would have been destroyed like Sodom had it not been for a very small remnant. Hey, I realize that America today seems like she's on a toboggan slide to hell. Yeah. It seems like it gets worse every day. Yeah. We ain't got no godly leaders no more. Amen. We ain't got nobody standing up for nothing no more. It don't seem like anyway. Come on. But I'm telling you, somewhere down in the midst and the mire, somewhere down as God looks down upon this nation and sees the black cloud of sin that hovers over it, somewhere down, you might have to look a little hard to find it, but somewhere down there's still some mamas that are on their knees praying. There's still some grandmas that's got faith. There's a generation of young people that are going to refuse to bow their knee to Baal and kiss his image. There's still a remnant today that's not going to deny his name, that's going to hold on to the faith, that's going to stand for the word. And that's the hope for America today is the remnant that is left in her. Hallelujah. Those that still fear God, those that still love God, those that still pray and seek his face. Yes, sir. That's the truth. Amen. You got it. There's a hope for America today. Yes. Amen. Yep. But it's not in Washington. Amen. It's not in politics. Right. It's not in the Oval Office. Right. It for sure ain't in the Oval Office right now. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. There is a hope for America Come today. On, preach. It's not the Republican Party. Right. It's not the Democratic Party. Come on. It's not the Tea Party. Come on. It's not the Independent Party. Come on. Amen. It's the Remnant Party. Yes, sir. Woo! Hallelujah! It's a people that have not bowed their knee to Baal. Right. A people that refuse to kiss the image Amen. of Baal. Yes, sir. Amen. That's true. A people that refuses to compromise with the doctrine of Islam. Come on. A people that refuse yeah. to lay the Holy Bible and the Quran on the same pew. Amen. That's good. That's it. Amen. My, my. Oh my goodness. My Lord help us. God's always had a remnant. Yes. He's going to continue to have a remnant. Come on. A very small uh -huh. remnant. Uh -huh. Amen. Come on. And I'll give you something else here in Isaiah, the 10th chapter. Oh, this tickled my gizzard. Praise Isaiah, the 10th chapter, the 20th verse. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. In other words, they will no longer lean or depend upon the one that had them in bondage. <laughs> but they shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, Amen. in truth. Yes. Now I know this is talking about a natural Israel here. Come on. Oh, I heard every scripture has a natural and a spiritual. Amen. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Do you know your spiritual Israel today? If you've been grafted into the mind by the blood of Jesus and by the grace of God, you have become part of His family. You've been grafted in. Amen? Amen. True. He said they will no longer stay or depend or lean upon the one that had them in bondage. But they will stay. They will lean upon. They will depend upon the Lord, the Holy God of Israel in truth. Amen. True. The remnant will no longer depend and lean upon the system of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Yeah. 
But we will lean and depend and stay upon the Holy One of Israel, upon the only one and true God. In truth, we will stay and depend on Him. And you know what, honey? Not only will the remnant depend on Him, but He will come through for His remnant. Amen. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. You may think that pity little old remnant Ain't been around forever. Ain't nothing going to happen at all. But I got news for you. God's going to provide for His people. God is going to raise up some stones out of the heap of the rubbish and build something in these last days. The people that are go forth and preach the unadulterated, undiluted, unwatered down Word of God. A remnant that will stand up for the name of Jesus and not bow their knee to the religious system of the world. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Talking about a remnant this morning. God. We're talking about a remnant this morning. Yeah. Amen. Come on. They won't be that hard to spot. Right. Amen. Come on. Because they're good. They're going to be a peculiar people. All right. They ain't going to be the norm. You're right. Amen. Come on. They're going to be like the black sheep. Right. Of the family. Come on. <laughs> I heard that old song this week. Oh. Do you have heaven? Do you have room in your heaven for this black sheep? Yeah. Amen. Going to stick out like a sore thumb. Amen. Amen. Ain't going to be the same. Right. God said He's going to have a peculiar people. Yes, He did. Amen. Now I ain't talking about a bunch of weirdos. I'm talking about being peculiar. Right. It's a difference. Amen. Yeah. I'm talking about being separated from the world. Right. I'm talking about leaning yeah. upon God. On. Amen. On. I'm leaning, leaning, leaning on. on the everlasting arms. Amen. It says they're going to stay okay. upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. See, the remnant is going to return to God. Right. Amen. They're going to walk in the freedom from the world, the flesh, and the devil that the blood of Jesus has provided. All right. Amen. Sin it's not going to have dominion Amen. over the remnant. Right. Amen? Come on. Sin is not going to have dominion. Now all of us sin, don't get me wrong. But to sin is one thing, to be bound by it, something else. Yeah. Amen? Come not on. excusing sin. Ain't no excuse for sin. If you sin, by all means, please, for your sake, call out on Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me. I messed up. Amen? Right. I confess my sins. Yeah. I know you're faithful and just to forgive me Come of on. my sins. Amen. Right. The remnant still believe in the blood. Amen. Amen. The remnant still stay upon the one and true God of Israel. The remnant still right. depending on the remnant is like Elijah was when he was by the brook Cherith. Amen. And there was a famine in the land. And he drank from the brook. And the ravens brought him something to eat. Honey, I got news for you. Being a part of the remnant will not make you popular. Amen. It might even get you secluded. If we stay for very much of the tribulation period. It might even get you cut off from the world system. But honey, if we got to set up somewhere in the hills of Kentucky, the side of a brook somewhere, our God is more than able to provide for us. He's always provided for His remnant. He will do it today. If we refuse to bow our knee to bail, Come on, break. we might have to give our life. Yeah. They've had to give their life. That's it. Many, many, many people have had to give their life. Amen. What makes you any more different? What makes you more special? Right. We might have to. Get, we might have to lay our head on the chopping block. Amen. We might have to give our life for the cause of Christ. They're doing it over here right now. Yes, sir. You're waiting for the tribulation period to happen, so you because that's when it's going to happen. No, it's happened already. Right. The beginning of sorrows is already here. That's it. Right. We're just too blind and stupid. Many of the church people are too blind and stupid to realize it. Come on. Amen. Come on. We're waiting for things to get better and things are going to get worse. Yeah. I'm talking about the world system. Amen. Yes, sir. My goodness. You might have to give your life. Come on. Right. That's true. But then what have they done? To be absent from the body to is to be present with the Lord. The Lord. We get so caught up with this temporal way of thinking that we think it's awful yeah. if somebody has to give their life for Jesus. Uh -huh. He gave His life for you. Amen. Amen. That's right. And the moment your breath, your last breath, leaves your body, you're in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. So what have they done? They've just sent you on home. Amen. Right. I'm telling you, church, the remnant going to stand for Jesus and let the world go by. Yeah. 
When you stay on God, when you depend on God, when you lean on God, He's going to provide for you. That's a characteristic. See, we're going to be learning a lot about the characteristics of the remnant. Mm. That's one of the characteristics of the remnant. They, they, they lean on God. Yeah. They stay on God. They depend on God. Amen. They're dependent upon Him. And God will not fail you. Amen? Right. The remnant we learned last week will be fruitful. Come on. Amen? They will take roots downward. They will bear fruit upward. Yeah. They will be a separated and a different people. They will be not like the norm. Amen? They will be different. Than the rest. Amen. Amen. My goodness, they will be separated yeah. from the world. Amen. Amen. They will be separated yeah. from the world. Amen. Their way of thinking will not be the same as oh, the world's. True. Their way of speech will not be the same Amen. as the world's. Come on. We will be in the world, but not of the oh. world. The remnant, God's people, that have not bowed their knee to the false gods of this day that have not kissed the rug toward Mecca, that have not kissed the Pope's ring, amen, that have not bowed the knee to denominationalism, Come on. Amen. amen, and compromised their convictions and their right thinking in order to be a part of some kind of crowd, amen. amen. The remnant will not allow Bible colleges to brainwash them into believing that all versions of the Word are the same. Amen? It doesn't matter what translation you use. Oh, yes, it does. Amen? I think it was my beautiful wife that brought to my attention this week. Somebody did anyway. I believe it was her. She's going to get the credit whether she did or not. But the New King James Version does not say that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. It says for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. There's a difference between being begotten and the one and only only son of amen. There's a lot of us that are sons of God, but there is only one begotten. Amen. Have always has been, always will be. Amen. He is the Son of the living God, the only begotten Son of God today. There is a difference. Yes. So the remnant ain't going to allow the Bible colleges to brainwash them into believing that all translations are the same because that ain't all translations are not the same. As a matter of fact, you could call this 1611 King James Version a remnant Bible today. You know why? Because this is what's left of the original. Amen? This is part of the original. Remember last week I told you, cut from the same cloth. Amen? This comes from the... Oh, this is cut from the same cloth as the original. As far as the English speaking people are concerned, this is it. Come on. Ain't it? The rest of them ain't it. Not the original. They're not the original. Counterfeits. All right. Oh, it might look sort of real. Right. You know how they tell about counterfeits, don't you? Amen. Them experts, they put them under the magnifying glass. Right. Say, wait a minute. This is not the original. Mm -hmm. You can do that with the translations, the modern day translations of today. Yes. When you begin to look at them, oh, they look like a Bible. Yeah. They even have some parts of the original still in there. Right. But when you get to looking, because see, a, a, a fake dollar bill mm. has some of the characteristics of the original dollar bill. Right. Until you look at it close uh -huh. and you realize this is counterfeit. Right. This ain't the real genuine thing. Come on. That's exactly the way it is with modern day translations. Yeah. And the remnant ain't going to be satisfied with nothing else but the true word of God. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that don't know the difference. But that's on our shoulders to tell them. Come on. We're supposed to tell them, hey, did you know there's a difference? Right. Hey, did you know there's a did you know there is a true way and a wrong way? Amen. Amen. I told you that the hope for America rests upon the shoulders of the remnant, and it does. All right. In what way, Brother Billy? Because we have the answer. That's right. Jesus Christ and his everlasting word. Amen. We have the answer today. It is our responsibility to take the medicine to the sick people that will heal them. And that medicine is Jesus. It is our responsibility to be the applicator to apply the balm that is in Gilead. And that is Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's the hope for America today. It's in the message of Jesus. But He's not going to open the heavens and come down and sit down on the, on the, on, on the steps of the White House and begin to preach. He left you to do that. Amen. He left you to do that. Right. He left you to tell the truth. He left you to preach the truth. He left a remnant of people Come on. that will stand for Him Amen. in these last days. Right. And many, many times, this is a very small remnant, and we see that. Mm. Amen. Come on. 
When we come in here sometimes and there ain't been a handful of us, we get kind of discouraged, but we shouldn't be. Amen. Because we're in the Word. Yeah. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. See it. A very small remnant. Amen. Straight is the gate. Narrow the way. Few there be that find it. We're talking about the remnant. Amen. Amen. Talking about being separated from the world. God has always had a remnant. He continues to have a remnant today. He had a remnant during Elijah's time. Right. But my goodness, you go way back before that. Amen. How about let's go back to the book of beginnings, back to the book of Genesis, and find out if God had a remnant, had a remnant back then. You see, God doesn't call the biggest or the best. Somebody thank God, say thank God for that. Amen. He doesn't call the richest or the most famous. Yeah. Somebody say thank God for that. He calls those who are willing to listen to His call, yeah. to seek His face, and to obey His voice. There's just some more characteristics of the remnant. Yeah. They will seek His face and not His hand. Yeah. Oh, I hope you can get that. Hallelujah. For they know if they seek His face, His hand will follow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Listen to this. I told you to go to Genesis, didn't I? Well, you can stay there, but I'm going to give you a scripture out of the book of Malachi. Now, Malachi, this was at the beginning, it was at the ending of the Old Testament. Yeah. And people were in a terrible shape then. Amen. Matter of fact, it's filled with a bunch of God robbers. They didn't give nothing. They didn't give nothing. Amen. Most churches today full of a bunch of God robbers. Right. Oh, my goodness. Do you hear what I said? Amen. Oh, that don't go over too good, does it? Even here. But even then, in the midst of a perverse and backslidden Israel, the Bible says in Malachi 3 and 16, that would be easy to remember, shouldn't it? 3 16. Amen. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that fought upon his name. Oh, can I read that again? Yeah. What are you talking about, Brother Billy? I'm talking about a remnant. I'm talking about a remnant of people. It didn't say everybody was doing it. Mm. It said they. Yeah. Meaning the ones. And I imagine it was a very small number compared yeah. to the population. Come on. Then they that feared the Lord. Did you still fear the Lord today? They spake often yeah. one to another. And hearkened. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written, oh my goodness, before him, for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Yeah. Can we back up to the first part of that scripture when it says they, they spake often one to another? Wonder what they spoke about. Reckon it was the latest gossip that they had just heard at prayer meeting? Reckon it was the latest gossip that they had just heard come from the synagogue? Reckon it was the latest gossip that they had just heard on their neighbor next door? No, 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 no. God tells us right here. It was those that thought upon His name. So evidently what they spoke one to another was about was about the Lord. It was those that thought they feared the Lord. Yeah. And they spake one to another. And they thought upon His name. Yeah. We ain't got no fear of God no more. Come on. I hear what I'm saying? We don't have no fear or reverence of God anymore. Amen. People treat churches like they do the bingo hall. Amen. Amen. They'll come in drinking their soda pop and eating their popcorn and wearing their cutoffs and they don't care. They sit down right on the front pew and eat their lace barbecue potato chips Amen. and they don't care. The preacher preaching shorts and he don't care. They'll move the, they'll move the podium out and the TV in for the ball game and they do not care. Come on. But the remnant's going to care. That's it, brother. The remnant's going to care. Come on. Amen. Come on. When you get around the remnant, it ain't going to be hard for you to figure it out. You know why? Because it ain't going to be so. And I know every conversation we have don't have to begin with Jesus. I know that. Amen. Mm -hmm. ah, they used to have a saying that, though, that there's some people that's so heavenly minded, you know, that there's no, they're no earthly good. Is that, that how the saying was? Well, yeah. I, I don't know about that, but I know I don't like the people that's so worldly minded don't know heavenly good. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you today that whenever you get around some of these remnant people, you ain't going to be around them too long before Jesus' name comes up. You ain't going to be around them too long before you find out that they still fear the Lord. You ain't going to be around them too long before you find out that they still have a reverence for God. Amen. You ain't going to catch them eating popcorn in the sanctuary. 
you ain't going to catch them wearing their cutoffs and their, and, and their muscle shirts. Amen. To prayer meeting. Hallelujah. There's going to be some people who still reverence and fear in God. Hallelujah. Amen. Still have a reverence for God. That's right. They still think on His name. Amen. They still speak to one another. Right. And it ain't, it ain't all about the ball game. Yeah. It ain't all about the hunting. It ain't all about life's woes. Right. But somewhere in there, they're going to talk about Jesus. Right. Amen. Come on. You ain't going to be able to be around me very long until you hear about Jesus. All right. In one form or fashion, yeah. you're fixing to know that I know Him. Amen. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. And we see this all throughout the Word of God that He had a remnant. And many times they were small in the, oh, let me finish it in, Ma, in Malachi the third. I get in a hurry, and I know I don't need to because we're probably going to be on this for weeks. Malachi three and seventeen. Listen to what he says. Listen to what God says about this remnant of people that feared His name, that 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 feared the Lord, that thought upon His name. That He He wrote down a book of. Is that what it said? That He He had a book of remembrance. Amen. Isn't that Isn't that wonderful today? Yeah. Isn't that a wonderful promise that there was a book of remembrance written? Listen to that. Yeah. Before Him, before God, there was a book. Of remembrance written for these people that fear the Lord and thought upon His name. And this is what He said. And they shall be mine, yeah. saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels, mm -hmm. and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Talking about that remnant. Amen. Oh... When he makes up his jewels. Somebody wrote no song about that. Amen. When I make up my jewels, I will spare them. Right. You see, God's children are not appointed to wrath. Right. Now, some of the things that man is doing, one way or the other, we're going to have to suffer through some of it. Right. It's going to affect our lives. Amen. But when God begins to pour out his wrath, yeah. On this world. Come on. When you get over to the book of Revelation, we will before we're done. Yeah. When you get over there, see, God's people are not appointed to the wrath of God. He's going to spare His people right. from His wrath. Amen. Amen. Come on. Oh. He's talking about a remnant here that feared Him, that thought yeah. upon His name. I'm fixing to close here. <clears throat> you talk about a small remnant. We're in the book of beginnings, Genesis the sixth chapter. And the fifth, Genesis six and five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Yeah. Do you hear that? Amen. God looked down upon the muck and the mire and the smut and the filth and the cloud of sin that covered the earth. And the thoughts and the imaginations of man were evil continually. Yeah. So much so the Bible says it repented the Lord that He had made man the earth. Yeah. And it grieved Him in His heart. Right. You know sin grieves the heart of God. Amen. You know it grieved the heart of God the day our president stood before our nation and condoned homosexuality yeah. and marriage between a man and a man and a woman and a woman. Yeah. True. I was reading some quotes just a few days ago about from George W. Bush and I don't care whether you like him or not. And he said, we've got to keep marriage between man and woman. You see the stark contrast we have between what we had and what we have now, right? Amen. Amen. True. He also said, when a person receives Jesus as their Savior, it changes their heart. Amen. That's true. You know what Obama said? He said, we all are trusting in God no matter what name we call Him by. Yeah. But even in this present day, God still got a remnant. Right. He still got somebody that's going to stand up for the name of Jesus. True. Oh my goodness, I'm about to bust my gut. Praise so looking down on the earth is how wicked it is, and I'm facing clothes. I promise. Praise Listen to what the Lord said: I will destroy man whom I have created. Now, what what did we read earlier? I don't have time to go back there, but we read where it said, except the Lord had left a very small remnant, then destruction would have surely came. 
They would have been wiped out. Yeah. We're going to find that right here in the book of Genesis. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Come on. Both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me right. that I have made them. Come on. But while he's looking, while he sees the wickedness and terribleness of man, the awful state they're in, yeah. there's a little old man Amen. that has not bowed his knee to the false gods of that day. Come on. Right. Ain't gonna tell them what they was worshiping. Right. Whew. My goodness, you might think today, what good can I do? Yeah. I'm just one person. Oh, thank God for this one person that God's about to find in Genesis, the sixth chapter. Amen. Amen. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Right. Somebody said you can't find grace till you get in the New Testament because that's the dispensation of law in the old, and the dispensation of grace began in the new. Oh, you need to read your Bible. Wow. If it wasn't for the grace of the Old Testament, there'd have been no New Testament. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. God looks down and there's a remnant. You talk about small. Yeah. That finds grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. He's getting ready to destroy the earth. Yeah. In verse 7. But thank God, verse 8 starts out with a but. Yeah. Amen. Somebody say but. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And there have been times that God was just about ready to cut America completely off and destroy the United States by some earthquake or allowing some other nation to take over. Amen. But thank God when He looked down, even through the abortions and the killing of babies, even through the homosexuality that is rampant, somehow, some way, under the muck and the mire, He either heard a voice of a remnant calling up out of that crowd or He seen somebody he seen a remnant that was still holding on to his unchanging hand. Hallelujah. Amen. And he sees Noah. And he says, wait a minute. I found somebody. God's looking for somebody that has not bowed their knee to Baal. Right. Amen. Come on. That has not kissed the image. Yes. My Lord, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Honey, you better be glad for grace because if it wasn't for grace appearing in the book of beginnings, there would have been no book of the ends. Amen. All right. It all ended right there in verse 7. Yeah. <laughs> Remember what we read, except the Lord had left unto us a very small remnant. Had it not been for Noah, the remnant of his day, he was it, man. The Bible didn't even say his family found grace, but because of Noah they did. Amen. All right. He allowed Noah called him up out of that destruction. See, that's what he's going to do with the remnant in the last days. See, when you got Noah had had to put up with a lot of things. Now get this. I'll close it. Noah had had to put up with a lot of things. I'm sure that times were not good. Because sin, well, anytime sin multiplies, Brother Scott, so does heartache and trouble and trial and Amen. grief. Right. Amen. Look at it. Anytime that sin grows, so does everything else. That's Bad right. things. Right. So he had suffered a lot at the hands of man. But as soon as God got ready to pour out His judgment, He protected His remnant and brought them up out of it. Think about that. He spoke to Noah and said, Noah, you build a boat. I'm fixing to destroy the world. Noah works for 120 years preaching righteousness and building a boat. Hammer in one hand, swore to the word in the other. Come on, man. Speaking to the people. Amen. It's coming. Right. They laughed at him. Uh -huh. They'll laugh at the remnant. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They call you old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Matter of fact, they'll think you're very foolish. Yeah. And they'll call you a crank. Right. But the truth is, you're a drunken on the wine that Peter drank. Come on. We're talking about the remnant. They made fun of him. They ridiculed him. They didn't believe him. When going, when going time came around, he went, why? Because he had not bowed his knee to the images of that day. He had, he had held to God. He had stood in the faith. That's what the remnant will do. Amen. We're going to stand in the faith. Yeah. Things don't look good. Things are breaking on every hand. Yeah. We're going through trials. But honey, we're going to go through them with oh. Jesus. Amen. Oh. We ain't going to let go. How small was the remnant? 
How small was that remnant in Genesis the sixth chapter? Even if you count his family. Yeah. What was it, eight people? Even if you count his family. Yeah. And him and his family were the remnant of that day because of Noah finding grace in the eyes of the Lord. And had it not been for that remnant, there would be no us today because God was getting ready to wipe it all off the face of the earth. That's what I mean today whenever I say the remnant is the hope for this last day. Amen. Some people that still find grace in the sight of God. Amen. Some people that still believe in the blood of Jesus. Wow. That still have their faith on the finished work of the cross. That still walk in the Word of God. Wow. That still trust Him as their provider. Right. Amen. Amen. That was a pretty small remnant there, wasn't it? Even in this present day, God still. See, God's going to have a remnant. God's going to have somebody that's going to pray. Right. God's going to have somebody that's going to stand up for what is right. right. God's going to have somebody that's going to have conviction. Amen? Amen. It may be few and far between and hard to find, but God's going to have somebody that's going to love His Word. Right. God's going to have somebody that's going to love Him more than they do the things of the world. God's going to have somebody like Moses who chooses rather than, rather than being the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he chooses to be the deliverer of, he, of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. He refuses to be the son of Pharaoh's daughter but chooses to be the deliverer that God sends to deliver His people up out of bondage. Honey, the remnant has the message today to deliver God's people up out of bondage. Yeah. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus Jesus saves. I know you think it's old fashioned, but it's still the cross and nothing else. It's still the Word and nothing else. It's still the blood and nothing else. Amen. He's going to have a remnant that's going to carry the message. Amen. He's going to have a remnant. The question is, are you going to be one of them? Are you going to bow your knee to the world? And listen, i got, I got hope for you folks out there that have bowed. Maybe you have bowed and kissed the rug toward Mecca. Maybe you bowed before the Pope and kissed his ring. Maybe you sitting there today listening to my radio counting your beads. I got news for you. There's still hope for you today. Turn from your false gods. Put away the false gods of Islam. Put away Muhammad. Put away Allah. Put away denominationalism. Put away praying to the saints and turn to the one and only true God of Israel and become part of the remnant of these last days. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. The remnant. The remnant. Right. Oh, my, my, my. Somebody's still going to believe God. Amen. And that's going to be the remnant. True. Amen. All right. Somebody else have something today before we go.